At the crack of dawn in Dufftown, Scotland, a century-old family tradition awakens. At Glenfiddich Distillery, every day begins with a fresh batch of malted barley that will eventually become whiskey. I really do believe whiskey is in our blood. Especially here, one of the last family-run single malt distilleries turning it out for almost 130 years. There is a lot of responsibility put on our shoulders. We need to keep the tradition alive. That tradition began in 1887 with William Grant. A maverick of his time, he built the distillery by hand and then using barley and local Robbie Dew spring water, the whiskey was born. It was named Glenfiddich, Gaelic for Valley of the Deer. Today, the process remains largely unchanged, and the same passion is passed down to generations of craftsmen. It's a great pride in that. Bob Milne is the mashman. The 28-year veteran lays the groundwork. 41,000 litres of water, 10 tonne of malted barley goes in here at the same time, like a thin porridge. Under his watchful eye, it's heated to 64 degrees Celsius. Then a pit stop to the washbacks where yeast is added. We'll sit in there for maybe 40 hours. And when the yeast starts to react with the sugary water, it turns the sugars into alcohol. Using a hydrometer, he tests the strength of the alcohol. As you can see, this one is quite high. So it's given off a good strength. The further down it goes, the less strength it has. The higher up it goes, the better strength it has. Next, it's on to Stillman Davy Grant. For over 20 years, he's been running the heart of the operation. I think it makes you very proud. It's part of a family oriented business. Me being a local lad from Dufton, I'm pretty proud of what I do. This is where the magic happens, where the spirit gets its distinctive flavor. Glenfiddich stills very unique because in the size and the shape of the stills, every second one is a different shape. So the liquid comes off quicker, gives it a unique, unique taste as well. I say copper because chemical reaction, plus it holds the heat better. Here it gets distilled, boiled to 95 degrees Celsius. Basically, we bring it up to high, high temperature, which produces an alcoholic vapor, which runs down the line pipe and hits a condenser. This now brings it back into a liquid. Then they do it a second time. Boil up again the same procedure to make a very, very strong vapor. This now goes down to get water down to make whiskey. But it's not whiskey until it gets one last ingredient, time. Whiskey is not actually classified as a whiskey until it's sat in a cask for a minimum of three years. And that's by Scottish law. In the warehouse, the smell hits as soon as you walk in. But Mike Dawson, who's lived and breathed it for 12 years, doesn't even notice it anymore. I've had a holiday for three weeks before, and I came back and I actually got to smell the same flavors that the visitors have done. And that was awesome. <laughs> the watchman guards over the spirits as they sit patiently, aging in used sherry and bourbon oak casks. So here we've got a range of casks. We've got a Glenfiddich 1995, 1975, and then right beside it, we've got the oldest cask that's in the warehouse here, a 1957. The whiskey in the cask will mature. It actually soaks into the wood and comes back out again. Each year, 2% is lost to evaporation. When it's time to release them, he gets first crack. We're using a hammer and spike here to open up our bunk. We take a spike in against the grain, so it pops the bung a lot easier. These are breather pipes. These will help the spirit flow a lot quicker. This river of 15-year-olds is being filtered and transferred into the giant vat. Then, one last checkup. To me, this one is looking very healthy. You would drink it. <laughs> 
perfect batch, on its way to becoming one of the 100,000 bottles these craftsmen make in a day. And just like their predecessors, each one is a labor of love. I see Glenn Fiddick on the shelf. You take great pride in seeing that a lot of times I've taken a lot of part in that bottle being produced and on display.